So that was Now's the Time by Charlie Parker, one of the standard blues in the uh, jazz repertoire, the standard F blues that everyone should know uh, in playing this music. Uh, just about everyone learns this tune early on in their development. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about what we did uh, with Now's the Time. Uh, and it's actually based on, a, on an old uh, R&B tune called Doing the Hucklebuck that Charlie Parker adapted to playing this melody. Uh, and what you might notice about the tune, about the melody, is that it's very rhythmic. So it allows you to take a very rhythmic approach to your improvisation. So we'll demonstrate that um, just to get into it. Um, so the ba basic melody goes like this. usually play that twice and then you go on to solo. So one of the things that I like to do, particularly with this kind of melody, is to live vicariously through the drums because, you know, drums are my first love. So what you can do with this melody is that you can give it some variation. It allows you to, to variate from that rhythm uh, and to improvise even within playing the melody. Uh, let's do the melody twice and I'll demonstrate that a little bit. One, two, a one, two, three. So you can hear that even within playing the melody, you can start your development right away within playing the melody. You don't have to wait until the actual beginning of your solo chorus. So the other thing that this allows you to do is to connect with the rhythm section. And for me, this is really very important uh, in my own concept of playing and improvisation. 
I like to think of myself actually as part of the rhythm section uh, and trying to be in the middle of all of that composite rhythm that's happening. Because what's happening there is a chemistry and a polyphony that you can be a part of. So if you can think about the jazz quartet uh, as like a mini orchestra. So you get all of these pieces of the puzzle that are constantly fitting together. Uh, the other thing is that you begin to get into a, a conversation with the rhythm section. Now, what I love about that is that everyone can add to your solo, help you to develop your solo. Uh, so for me, it gives me more ideas. So uh, think about it this way. You don't have to do all of the work. You know, let the music work for you. So when you let the other guys have a part of that, uh, it, it, does, it does a couple of things. One, it allows you to create a trust factor because when the rhythm section knows that you're listening to them, then they're gonna support you even more and give you more interplay and give you more ideas. The other thing it does is that you don't use up all of your own ideas right away. You know, sometimes you hear people sort of playing everything they know on like one or two choruses. Well, you want to like have theme and development. So this allows you to start your solo thematically and develop it over a number of choruses. So you never have to feel like you're running out of ideas early on in your solo. You know, I think about it this way, always leave them wanting more. So what you can do by employing the rhythm section is now you can make yourself more musical and you can make the statement, the overall musical statement within the band more compelling, more compelling for the listener. And it gets everybody on the bandstand and everyone in the audience listening to what you want to do. A one, two, three. Thank you. 